All right, so in today's video, I'm gonna go over electric heat strip wiring. These are very common in heat pump systems and electric furnaces. Uh, one of the first things that's very important to understand when it comes to working in any kind of an air handler with heat strips in it is that sometimes the power source, the 230 volts that goes into the air handler, might power both the blower and the heat strips, or you might have two completely different power sources for your blower motor and heat strip. What that basically means is that sometimes one breaker will kill the power to the whole unit. Sometimes you might have to kill two breakers because the heat strips have its own dedicated breaker. And sometimes you might see that breaker right on the air handler itself. Sometimes you have to go all the way down to the electric panel in the basement to kill the power to the heat strips. But either way, um, always be aware of that possibility so that you can safely work on these systems without being electrocuted. So let's get into it. So you have here L1 and L2. Um, each one of these legs have 120 volts coming in on them. Now, if you see my last video, um, you might notice this diagram here. This is the same diagram I used in that video. And you'll see you have L1 here, L2 here, this 120 volts on each leg. And as I covered in that video, you're always going to have a live 120 volts coming in on your blower motor. Now, your blower motor is not going to run until it gets the full 230 volts. So that other power leg has to hit that motor for it to run. The same exact thing is for your heat strips. So when we look um, here on this schematic, we can see that we have one leg coming off here and it's going straight up here to what is called a fusible link and then it goes right into our heat strip which is right here now what is a fusible link so here I have a picture of a fusible link you notice you will have two spades here and then this is the actual fuse that will melt on high amperage so if your coil is ever drawing a really high amperage this is going to melt and it's going to break the circuit so you would have 120 volts coming in on this spade going through this multiple fuse and coming back out again so if this were to ever draw high amperage and melt it will cut the power off between these two spades and your heat strip will no longer be able to function so here I have a picture of this fusible link right here and this is a ceramic connector right here. So on the other side of this you would have those two spade terminals. So what you would have is uh, one line voltage coming in, going through this fusible link here, coming back out and then jumping over to the ceramic tile uh, connector that eventually goes through the actual heating coil itself. So that's all of that right here. Now the diagram we're working off of right here is out of a really old Goodman unit. Um, this is something you'll commonly see as a service tech because normally you're working on older systems that are breaking down, not newer ones. But what I have over here is a heat strip out of a newer heat pump Linux uh, system. Um, I think this system was only about six, seven years old. And you'll see here that there are no uh, fusible links on it. So if you follow the leg of power coming off that breaker, you'll notice it will go straight into those ceramic connectors there that go into your heating coil. Whereas on your diagram here, you have your leg of power going through that fusible link before it goes to the coil. So it, it, even though the systems are completely different, Goodman, Lennox, 20 years old, six years old, the, the principle is pretty much the same that you're gonna have 120 volts coming off a power source that eventually goes right into the heating coil. In this particular case, we just have a fusible link worked into that schematic. Um, whereas on some of them you might not see that. So that's one leg of power going to one side of our heat strips and now we need the other leg of power to close um, and make it to the other side of that heat strip so the heat strip actually powers up and gets hot. So when we look down here we have uh, L2 coming off all right, and it's going through our relay. This is the switch that actually opens and closes that circuit. So we have 120 that's constantly going up to one side of that heating coil, and we have another 120 that's going up to the other side of it, but this one has a switch in it. So this is how we turn the heaters on and off, is through controlling this, this switch here. So we have a constant 120 going there, but the 120 on this leg is conditional based on the position of that switch. So when we follow that back up, we come to what is called a thermal limit on the other side of that heat strip. So when we look in the picture here, this is um, this. Even though the schematic we're working off of is in 20-year-old Goodman, 
Um, this is a photo of a six or seven year old Lennox, and you can see the same principle in play. Uh, you have one leg going straight up to one side of your coils here, and then you have black wires coming off another leg, all right, and those go through your re relays here. Those are your switches, comes out of there and goes through your thermal limits right here, all right, and then it goes to the other side of your coil. So you have one leg of power going to one side of the coil, one leg of power going through the other side of the coil, and we control it with these relays. Now the thermal limit, what is the purpose of those? So here we see a picture of a thermal limit right here. That is that black little circle right there. Now what that is, is um, it's the disc inside of there that actually expands at a certain temperature. When it expands um, far enough, it will actually break that circuit. So this is a safety device. If these coils were ever to get really hot because your blower is not running or something like that, this uh, disc will overheat, break the circuit, and your, your electric coils will stop heating. They won't work anymore. Um, now, this is a resettable thing. It, it, once the system cools off, this disc will contract, and the circuit will close again, and the heaters will come back on. Um, the difference between that and a fusible link is that the fusible link is just a one-time deal. So once it melts, it's done, and it has to be replaced, whereas the thermal limit resets itself. So in a normal operating system, these switches here, the fusible link and the thermal limit, they're always going to be closed. The only time these are going to open is when you actually have a problem. So with that said, let's go ahead and let's focus on the actual mechanism that turns our heaters on and off, and that is our relay right here. Now your relay is going to have two parts to it. It's going to have a high voltage side and it's going to have a low voltage side. So your high voltage side is going to be on the actual switch that opens and closes. The low voltage side is what's going to actually open and close that switch. So looking at this diagram, we can see here we have a white wire coming in on terminal number six of our Molex plug. Uh, we have a coil here that when it gets energized, it will close this switch. Now the power will go back out um, in this case, a blue wire that connects to the number four terminal on the male side of our Molex plug here. So here's our male side of the Molex plug right here. Okay, and we can see on terminal number six, we have that white wire. So this is the wire coming in from the relay, and this is the wire that's inside the air handler. So when we trace that white wire back, we can see that it goes up to the thermostat on the white wire, and that actually goes up to W1 on our thermostat so when our thermostat is calling for our heat strips to activate um, it will power that w1 terminal um, send the 24 volts on this wire on number six here it'll come into this coil energize this coil and close the switch our 120 volt leg on the other side of our heat strip will close the power will go there and our heat strips will turn on the power will then come back on that number four terminal and as we could see here, that number four terminal uh, would be a blue wire in this case. And when we follow it down, it goes to the common on the secondary side of our transformer. So this is the 120 volts that comes into the air handler. It gets stepped down to 24 volts. Um, the 24 volts comes off of the transformer, goes to our fan relay board here on our transformer R, jumps over to the R terminal on the fan relay board, and that red wire goes up to our thermostat. So when the thermostat calls for heat, um, this is gonna be more of a uh, electric furnace situation. A heat pump is a little bit different. Sometimes a heat pump will have a black wire that comes directly from the defrost board that activates this, but um, this is not a heat pump diagram, so we're just gonna focus on the heat strips itself. But um, in an electric furnace situation, your thermostat, when calling for heat, will take this 24 volts coming up from the fan relay board, which originates at the transformer, sends it over to that W1 terminal, and goes on to activate this relay, close the switch, turn on the heaters, and come back to common on our transformer. Now, when we look at this diagram here, we have uh, two rows of heating elements and the same exact principle applies. We have the white wire coming in with 24 volts, activates this coil, and it'll actually close both of these switches here. So both heating coils are gonna heat up. So this, is, this diagram here is the same exact principle as this diagram here, it's just doubled up. So 
you see you have one white wire coming in, activate that coil, and then your common going back out. Now on these two diagrams here, we have three and four heating elements. Now, I work up in the Northeast. I don't work on a lot of heat pump systems um, outside of like mini splits and ductless units and things of that nature. But um, anybody who works down South might be able to correct me if I'm wrong, but I would think that um, when you have th two stage heating, basically um, you have two relays here. So you'll notice on these relays, you notice you'll have a white wire coming in to activate the coil on this particular relay here, and that will only turn on two of your heating elements. All right, and the same thing is over here if you have four. It's only gonna turn on two heating elements. You need a separate 24 volt signal to turn on this other relay that will activate that third or possibly that third and fourth heating elements. So basically what this is is two stage electric heating. And um, getting back to my point, I think this is not something you might typically see in a heat pump system. This is something you're more likely going to see in a straight electric heating for a home. That's like the primary source of heat for the house. So there's no furnace, there's no heat pump, it's just electric heat strips. Um, I can't imagine you needing staged heating coils in a heat pump system that primarily uses heat strips for defrost cycles or auxiliary heating when the heat pump system alone can't generate enough heat because of really low temperatures outside and you just need that little extra bit um, to, to meet the set point on the thermostat. So when it comes to uh, the low voltage control side of a uh, two separate relays on two stages of electric heating, um, you're going to have your white wire coming in, which we know is coming off at W1 um, in this specific case here. And then we have our blue wire going out um, for, the, for the common. And that's for one relay. You'll see on this other relay, we have a brown wire coming in doing the same thing. That will activate this second coil here. And we have a blue wire that just kind of jumpers over back to the blue wire that goes back to common on the transformer. So we have a separate 24 volt signal coming from this number five terminal here on our male Molex plug that activates that second coil. So we can see here, that would be the number five terminal here. We follow that brown wire back and we can see that it goes up to our thermostat. Now this would be second stage heat or W2 up on our thermostat. So when our thermostat's calling for first stage heat, it's gonna be coming 24 volt signals to be sent on this white wire. When it's calling for second stage heat, it's also gonna send 24 volts on this brown wire. So here's the thing about thermostats. They don't always send 24 volts out just on one wire. So on a, on a call for heating or cooling or whatever, um, you'll have your 24 volts coming in from this uh, transformer off the fan relay board. Um, that 24 volts will come into the thermostat and on a call for heating, for example, it will send 24 volts out on this green wire. Um, and this green wire is going to activate the relay that turns on our blower motor here. And it will also send 24 volts out on the white wire, which will activate the heat strips. Um, in second stage cooling, it's going to do all three. It's going to send 24 volts out in the green, 24 volts out in the white, and 24 out on the brown simultaneously all at the same time. So you're going to have multiple signals coming from your thermostat on these types of systems. Now, heat pump wiring is slightly different than this, um, especially when you start getting to low voltage and the thermostats and reversing valves and things of that nature. I'm gonna get into that in my next video. So hopefully you guys found this pretty helpful. Um, if you wanna stay tuned in for that heat pump wiring video, go ahead and subscribe, blah, blah, blah. You guys know what to do. Uh, thanks for watching.